Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Perplexity, a mystery podcast. I'm your host, Kadra. I hope everyone's having a great new year so far. I just rang in the new year two days ago. Um, wasn't exactly the plan that I had in mind either. We were going to have some friends over and we cleaned the house and bought some food and drinks. And then like an hour before everyone was supposed to come over, TJ, my boyfriend, found out he had a fever. So <laughs> we have both been sick the last few days, which has not been fun. Um, but we've been home resting and we both are in a very fortunate position to where like, it's not going to really affect our ability to pay bills or anything. Um, so yeah, it it all worked out. And honestly, it was kind of nice because we got to just snuggle and watch a movie and go to bed at like 1030. (laughs) So, but anyway, I hope you guys are having a great new year so far. Uh, welcome back. As always, I'm your host, Kadra, and thank you so much for being here. It's really cool to start a new year and have this going um, as well as it's already been going. I mean, I haven't been doing this very long, but it's already been going so well, and that's thanks to you guys. So thank you so much. And if you're joining me for the first time, thank you also for listening. I also just wanted to take a minute to recognize We have some new listeners outside of the United States. Uh, I get analytics every week for who's listening, and there are some perplexity listeners in Canada, Germany, Ireland, and Argentina, which is so cool. So I just wanted to recognize you guys and say hello. Thank you so much for listening. If you've been enjoying the podcast and you haven't yet, Be sure to leave a five-star review and follow the podcast on whatever platform you're listening on. It really helps boost the podcast up the algorithms so that I can get these stories to more people. That would be so appreciated. Uh, If you missed last week, I released episode five, and that was another listener request. It was a classic legend. Definitely go back and check that out if you love a spooky story. And don't forget, if you have a story that you want to share with me that I'll read on the podcast, or if you have a topic request or a story you really want me to do, you can email me at perplexitymysterypodcast at gmail.com. I also have an Instagram page, so you can follow me on there. It's perplexitymysterypodcast. Let's get into this story. So I started doing some research this week about cruise ships, and I found this website that actually keeps track of all of these crazy things that have happened on cruise ships, whether it be disappearances, murders, drownings. So on that website, I ran across this story, and the more that I dug into it, I just thought it was so crazy and fascinating. This is the story of the disappearance and alleged murder of Lee Ying Li. Due to the content discussed in this episode, such as abuse, murder, and upsetting events, listener discretion is advised. My sources for today are two articles from The Independent by Catherine Figan and Catherine Devine, an article from cruisebrews.com, two articles from iMedia or min.news, M-I-N, an article from the dailybeast.com by Barbie Lotza Nadeau, and an article from irishmirror.ie by Paul Healy. And you want to hear something crazy, guys? I couldn't find anything about this story on Wikipedia. So, no Wikipedia source today. There's not that many people that seem to be talking about this case. Uh, it's pretty recent. This story takes place in February of 2017. We have some people we need to talk about. Li Ying Li, who also went by the English name Angie, was a 36-year-old woman who was a Chinese immigrant. Li Ying Li ran her own wedding planning business. It catered to the Chinese community in Dublin, Ireland, and the business launched in 2015. It became pretty successful. And her business was known as Cinderella's Wedding. It offered a wide range of packages. 
The couple also had some type of website together. I saw this on a, a written source, so the details about the website, I'm not sure. But apparently on this website, they made a range of podcasts, including some where Lee narrated about different travel destinations and cruises. And the couple lived in an apartment together with their two young sons, who were four and six at the time this took place. Lee had a little trouble with the law in the past, nothing major, but she did have her door broken down once when she refused to leave her apartment. She basically had some type of dispute with her landlord about unpaid rent and keeping unauthorized pets in the house. It sounds like she was living with Daniel at this time because the source talked about how they both had fallen behind on rent and lost their jobs. But for whatever reason, only Lee was prosecuted. Uh, she was prosecuted on a burglary charge with intent to cause criminal damage, but the judge dismissed the charge. Daniel and Lee did not have a perfect marriage. Nobody does. But there are well-documented issues that they had in their marriage. They argued a lot. They had financial problems. And neighbors of Lee and Daniel described them as an odd couple. One neighbor even came across Daniel sleeping in a stairwell one night after Lee had kicked him out of the apartment. So in 2017, the couple basically decides to take a cruise to see if they can get away and really work on their marriage. It sounds like they wanted to figure out if this was going to work or if it was just over and it was time for a divorce. They take their two sons with them and they embark on this cruise on February 9th, 2017. It's an 11 day cruise on the Mediterranean Sea and the cruise ship was named the MSC Magnifica. The cruise started off in Civita Vecnia, which is north of Rome, Italy, and it would later take them to Malta, Greece, and Cyrus. But when the MSC Magnifica returned to Civita Vecnia, Italy on Monday, February the 20th, 2017, Li Ying Li was nowhere to be found. Daniel allegedly failed to tell the crew on board that his wife was missing. And other reports also say that Daniel disembarked from the cruise later without telling anyone that his wife was missing. So, like, didn't even tell family or friends. Definitely suspicious. The last time that anyone can corroborate seeing Li Ying Li was on the second day of the cruise, which would have been February 10th, 2017. And this would have been while the MSC Magnifica was in Genoa. During the Genoa excursion on February 10th, there were eyewitnesses that reported seeing the family at a souvenir shop. They were apparently seen arguing. The clerk also corroborated this. The clerk reported that Daniel stormed into the souvenir shop while Lee was already inside. And the clerk claimed that Daniel started berating Lee for wearing sandals. He said, put these on instead of your sandals and shut up. Which, they're on vacation. Like, they're, they're on a tropical island exploring. She can wear whatever she wants anyway. But especially for them to be, like, on a cruise and he's having, he's getting this upset about what she's wearing... It seems clear to me that there was some control issues in this marriage. The clerk said that after this encounter, Lee appeared quite shaken, and this argument happened around 10 a.m. on February 10th. The MSC Magnifica kept careful electronic records with key cards. This is how they could keep track of when people were getting on and off the ship, and you could also use your key card to purchase items like drinks, so Lee was registered on the Magnifica's passenger record after the stop at Genoa. This would corroborate people's stories that this was the last time that people saw her. They also used video cameras on the ship to keep track of everyone's whereabouts. And later that same evening on February 10th, the couple and their children were seen by a waitress and other passengers having supper together at the Four Winds restaurant on board of the ship. According to cruise staff, Lee didn't turn up for breakfast the morning of the 11th. 
and Daniel and his children ate their meals alone for the rest of the trip. Later that same day, Daniel was also sighted by some other passengers with his two sons at the pool. People who saw them reported that Daniel appeared calm and patient with the kids. He wasn't yelling at them. It just seemed like a normal time at the pool with a father and his sons. When the cruise ended, crew members noticed that there was a discrepancy between how many passengers had gotten on the ship and how many had gotten off with their key cards. They noticed that someone had boarded the ship and never swiped to leave. So the cruise ship staff looks over the records and eventually they find that Daniel and his two sons are accounted for, but Lee isn't. Daniel Belling quickly became the prime suspect in the disappearance of his wife. He was arrested while trying to board a plane from Rome to Dublin after the cruise on February 22nd, 2017. He was with his two sons. So Daniel was detained in Regina Coeli prison in Rome. And at the time of his arrest, this is Daniel's story. Daniel claims that the last time he saw Lee was on their ship when it had docked on the Greek island of Catacol. The problem is Daniel can't seem to keep his story straight. He changes his story a lot throughout the investigation and the trial. Like I said, at first he claims that the last time he saw his wife was at this port. And he said that he took his children for the excursion and she stayed on board. But then later he's quoted saying that Lee didn't show up in Civita Vecchia, Italy, which would have been days before. And he thought that she had tried to escape their marriage or maybe gone back to China, that this was something that she often threatened to do. One of the other things he says later is that it was again in Greece the last time that he saw her because she had said she had business meetings that she needed to attend to in Greece. And he thought she had left the cruise to go on these meetings. And then at one point, he also says his wife left the boat while he and his kids went on this shore excursion. But before, he said that she was on the boat. So which one is it? You know, did she stay on the boat or not, Daniel? <laughs> and when did you last see her? Was it in Italy? Day two of the cruise? Or was it days later in Greece? At another point, Daniel even claimed that he packed up all of her belongings, her clothes, her luggage, and he just said he was going to take these items back with him to Dublin. He figured she would come get them later. But then another time, he claims that when he came back with his kids and Lee was gone, her suitcase and belongings were also gone. Later on, law enforcement searches the ship cabin that the family stayed in, and a lot of Lee's personal belongings, like her red coat, her shoes, her gowns, her mobile phone, credit card, and even her Irish residence permit, were all still at the cabin. It sounds like she was missing a suitcase, but other than that, it was not obvious that any other items were missing. Police also interviewed their two sons. Now, keep in mind that they're four and six years old, but I do think that this account is pretty telling and worth noting. The children reported that one evening, their father asked them to stay behind in the cruise ship cabin, saying that he had to go somewhere with their mother. But when Daniel came back, Lee was not with him, and the children reported they never saw their mother again. This would contradict Daniel's claim that Lee stayed on the ship when he went into port with the children. It just seems like he can't keep a straight story, which is never a good sign. Early on during the cruise, Daniel also tells housekeeping staff that they didn't need to make up the cabin's fold-out bed anymore since the family was, quote, all sleeping together in one bed. This is corroborated by both Daniel and the housekeeping staff. Now, among the cruise ship's passengers was a couple named Jorge and Milena Reyes. Like many others, they took part in the excursion at Heraclean Port, and when the Reyes family returned to the cruise ship, 
Jorge popped a can of beer and hung out on the deck of his cabin. And Jorge reported that while he was watching everyone get back onto the ship, he noticed Daniel Belling was walking in the opposite direction with his two children. Jorge found this odd. He was quoted saying, I clearly remember that everyone walked to the pier to get on the boat while this person walked to the other side. He was walking with the two children and his hand luggage was dragged along the narrow cobblestone street, making a loud noise. Jorge also reported that when he and his wife Molina got off a train in Civita Vecchia Port, Italy, at the beginning of their trip, they saw Daniel, Lee, and their two sons. Jorge described Daniel as being tall, pale, and that he had a clear German accent. He saw him walking behind his two sons, and the woman that the Reyeses assumed was Daniel's wife was seen yelling at Daniel. The Reyes has reported Daniel didn't respond to the yelling, he just walked quietly towards the boat. It's also interesting that Jorge Reyes is also quoted saying, We have never seen her on the boat, not once, referring to Lee. And then he also says, My wife always said to me, he always takes good care of the children and lets her rest. There are some other reports as well from uh, crew members and passengers that one of the sons was found wandering the corridors of the ship alone on the night of February 15th. Some people also reported that the children were always barefoot and that they were seen wearing the same clothes each day. Investigators also went through the CCTV footage from the cruise ship to determine when Lee was last seen. And the last time she used her key card to leave or enter the cruise ship was in Genoa, Italy. The CCTV footage also confirmed the reports of crew members that the last time Lee was seen was on the second day of the cruise at dinner. So now we have eyewitness reports, CCTV footage, and key cards all saying the same thing, that the last time that Lee was seen by anyone was on that second day of the cruise. There was never anything found that indicated that Lee used her key card to leave the ship. So the evidence points to she never left the ship or she ended up in the water somehow. A few weeks pass and in March 2017, there are two men working on their boat in the Adriatic port town of Rimini, which is near the east coast of Italy. It's a Saturday morning. And while they're working, the two men notice this blue canvas bag that's floating in the bay. They didn't think much of it at first. They said it's not uncommon for luggage and other debris to wash up on Italian shores along the busy cruise ship and ferry routes that ran from Greece to Venice. But the canvas bag was so bulky that it started banging against their boat one man eventually got so annoyed that he fished the bag out of the sea. He noticed that the bag was oddly heavy. Him and the other man opened the bag, and there, wrapped in a black garbage bag, was the body of an Asian woman, completely nude, who appeared to be around 35 years of age. The men quickly zip up the bag and call the police, but when an autopsy of the body was done and DNA testing was done, it was found this was not the body of Li Ying Li. The woman found inside of the suitcase was said to have much longer hair than Li. She was also said to be slimmer and about five inches taller. The coroner also estimated that the suitcase would have been in the water for at least 10 days. So the Adriatic port where this female's body was found is on the other side of Italy, like the opposite side of Civita Vecchia. So the suitcase would have had to have traveled about 750 miles in winter seas if it came from this ship, the MSC Magnifica. Not only this, but the suitcase didn't appear to show signs of wear and tear. Witnesses also said that the luggage that Daniel Belling and his family had was multicolored, mostly orange, and all part of a matching set. 
no one reported a blue suitcase. And we know that this woman was found in a blue canvas bag. There are some sources, though, that say depending on the currents, the suitcase could have washed ashore anywhere in the Mediterranean Sea, like Italy, Greece, Malta, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Syria, Turkey, or Bulgaria. However, Mediterranean Sea hydrodynamics, where Lee is thought to have gone overboard, have a southeastern flow of circulation, so it would make it most likely Lee or uh, her suitcase, anything that would have been thrown overboard, should have washed ashore on a beach at Crete, Libya, or Egypt. A lot of people would probably wonder who was this woman in the suitcase, but unfortunately the identity of the woman, from what I could find, was never figured out. However, there are a lot of factories in Italy that employ Chinese immigrants, and it's said that the conditions in these factories are very inhumane. So some people theorize that this woman could have worked in one of these factories and maybe died from the poor conditions and then was disposed of. So Daniel ends up being held in prison in Italy for 14 months. He hadn't been officially charged with Lee's murder, but the Italian law allowed for him to be held up to a year on suspicion alone. Belling's lawyer was a man named Luigi Conti. It was pretty hard to find information about the trial because it took place in Italy, so everything's in Italian. <laughs> but I did find a little bit. Luigi Conti apparently tried to get Daniel to be able to leave prison and stay at an apartment in Rome since the investigation could take a long time, but the court denied this request. He remained in jail. It's said that during the trial, dozens of witnesses were interviewed, including the captain of the MSC Magnifica. However, the one person that did not appear in court was Daniel Bellin. In Italy, you can apparently choose whether you want to participate in your own trial or not, so he wasn't there at all. Is that not sketchy? While Daniel was in prison, he also made numerous phone calls to his nephew and his mother-in-law, Yu Zhang Zen. The calls were recorded, transcribed, and they were also presented as evidence in the trial. I couldn't get a lot of details about these calls specifically or what was discussed, but during the trial, Yu Zhang Zen did file a civil lawsuit against Daniel Billing seeking compensation if he were to be convicted of killing Lee. I also found information about Lee's mother saying that she said she last spoke to Lee on February 7th, just before they left for the cruise. Lee's mother also found out that her daughter was missing when her friend sent her an article from the internet. Daniel never told her that her daughter was missing, but Lee's mother also says that although Lee and Daniel fought often, and she had seen Lee before with bruises from where Daniel had grabbed her, she still did not think that he could have anything to do with her disappearance. She said, quote, I have a very good relationship with Daniel. He's a very good person, and I don't think he could have hurt my daughter. She also doesn't think that Lee would have committed suicide or that she would have just willingly left her children. While Daniel was in prison, Luigi Conti also said that someone changed the locks at Daniel and Lee's home. He was quoted saying, It wasn't the Irish authorities, nor the bank. It wasn't any relatives of the couple. Who was it? Conti also said that between April and May of 2017, someone used Lee's credit card to pay for the M50, the Dublin Expressway toll. Conti also claimed that there was evidence that Lee was, quote, tired of life in Dublin and wanted to return to China. He talked about their marriage and financial problems, and he also went on to say that before Lee and Daniel went on the cruise, back in 2013, Lee had talked with psychologists and doctors in Ireland, uh, saying that she wasn't happy and she was tired of living in Dublin she wanted to leave Daniel and her kids, and she wanted to move back to China. 
Conti also submitted into evidence written statements that Lee allegedly wrote, saying, quote, My life in Ireland is like a prison. I want to go back to China and leave the children to Daniel, end quote. Conti's lawyer also submitted evidence alluding that Lee may have had a secret lover, including text messages dating back to November of 2016, sent by her cell phone number to another person with an Irish phone number. Conti also reportedly told the Sunday Independent that after Lee, quote, left, Mr. Belling did inform the cleaning personnel on the ship that three people were now staying in the room, not four. So even his own lawyer corroborates that he told the cleaning staff this news. So either way, Daniel would have had to have known that she left. Daniel was eventually acquitted and released in April 2018 because of lack of evidence. I mean, they never found her body. As unfortunate as it is, they did have to release him, but prosecutors continued investigating. And when Daniel Belling was released, he told reporters, quote, I am so happy to be out. The feeling of joy is immense. It's as if I've been born again. He also talked about how he was angry and he felt like he was framed by his wife. He describes Lee as a, quote, cruel person because she allowed him to spend 14 months in prison for a crime that, quote, she knew I had not committed. He also stated, quote, I think my wife is probably in China. The chance of her accident in Greece is very small. I believe she is in China. In the first few weeks, I was very worried about my wife, but not anymore. I think she knows I am imprisoned. Ying Li's mother had been interviewed and denies that Li ever returns to China. So not long after his release, Daniel was actually indicted on mortgage fraud that he had previously committed. Daniel stood before an Irish court and he ended up receiving a three-year suspended sentence because he falsified documents to obtain a mortgage. I thought this was interesting because when I read the quotes from Daniel's lawyer about finding her writings, I kind of wondered if maybe Daniel wrote them. And now he's being charged with falsifying documents. Again, this is just hearsay, but just something to think about. One article that I read said that after Daniel was acquitted, he returned to Ireland for a short period of time, then returned home to Germany with his family. But then this more recent article I found from the Irish Mirror, where they interviewed Daniel in July of 2022, said that he had moved back to Coolock, North Dublin. In this interview with the Irish Mirror, he says that he now believes Lee is probably dead. As far as the children, the last I heard about Daniel and Lee's sons was that they were in Germany being taken care of by their paternal grandparents. In July of 2020, Italian investigators wrapped up their investigation about Lee's disappearance. Even though Daniel Belling was never charged with the killing of his wife, the Italian investigators believe that Daniel Belling did in fact kill his wife. They believe that he threw her body into the sea. Lee's body has still never been found and Daniel Belling is still free. There are other theories about what could have happened to Lee. Some people think that Lee have, may have committed suicide on the ship. Others believe she was fleeing an abusive marriage. Foul play is of course another theory. Some people believe Daniel did it while others think it could have been a stranger. Or maybe the man that she was having an affair with had something to do with it. Some people think that Lee ran away to be with the man that she was allegedly having an affair with. Some people even think that Lee may have faked her death to frame Daniel and get back at him for all the misery that she felt in their marriage. But we may never know what happens to Lee Ying Lee until she is found or until someone comes forward with information. And that is the crazy story of the disappearance and alleged murder of Lee Ying Lee. 
I had so many questions. I still have so many questions after doing this story. If Lee did intentionally disappear and move back to China, why not just use her key card to, to disembark from the ship? Why has her passport never been used? Why did she never contact her family? Why all this secrecy and need to disappear? Why did Daniel keep changing his story? If we believed Daniel, we would still have to ask, why did he let her go so willingly? Because the way that he states things, it's like they just casually parted ways. And they have two children. And then we can't ignore what the kids said. They said that they never saw their mom again after Daniel went with her separately somewhere to do something. So did the kids really not see their mom for nine days? And why would she just abandon her children? Honestly, guys, I think that he killed her. I think that on day two of the cruise, he either found out about the affair or they had some kind of argument. She probably said she was going to leave him. And they went off separately to maybe talk things out or maybe Daniel had already planned to kill her. So they left their kids in the cabin, went up top to the cabin deck, probably at night to talk about things because this would have been after dinner. Maybe they got in an argument and he pushed her off the ship. She drowned. I don't know. Obviously, we don't know what happened, but I, I believe the investigator's theory. And based on all the evidence, we know that that is the last night that she was seen was February 10th. <sighs> so, man, definitely things to think about. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, share the link with a few of your friends. Be sure to leave a five-star review and follow the podcast on whatever platform you're listening on. I'll forever be grateful to you. And if you have requests for future stories or you want to share a story with me that I'll read on the podcast, don't forget you can email me at perplexitymysterypodcast at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram for perplexity updates at perplexitymysterypodcast. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye!